Hello and welcome to Synchro Software's 15 minute Friday presentation. My name is John Shaw and I am technical support team leader for Synchro Software. Today's presentation is about skyboxes, video codecs and effects. I will now pass the presentation over to Mitchell Palmer who is a VDC 4D specialist. Thank you. This webinar will explain and show the different graphical and visual effects that Synchro has to offer. Synchro allows you to add effects to create a more realistic 4D world for your 4D model. The three topics that, that this webinar will cover will be skyboxes, visual codecs and effects. Firstly, I will explain one of our new features which is our skybox feature which came out in our version 5 release. The skybox feature will allow you to add a 360 background to the 3D view. Synchro comes with a default skybox image. You can add your own images in Synchro if you need to. To get to your skybox feature, if you go to your 3D properties and you should have skybox option. Now in this box, right click and you want to create from a single image. Now to get to the default Skybox image, if you go to your C drive on your computer and go to Program Files, then go to Synchro LTD, then Synchro, then Client, then you should find a PNG image called Blue Sky W Clouds. If you click on that and press open, it will load it into Synchro. And here you have it. Now to turn it on, you just tick that box. And now in your 3D window, a 360 sky image has been added. The skybox is a great feature to add. It gives your 4D model a more realistic feel. And it looks great in your AVIs and also if you want to take an image in Synchro. The second topic will be on video codecs. Now I will explain the video codecs that Synchro uses and the process of deciding what the best codec to use is. A codec is used to create a video file of reduced size while maintaining most of the quality and to enable the video file to be played. Codecs are not supplied by Synchro, but several are installed as a standard part of your Windows system. When you choose to export an animation sequence as an AVI, Synchro allows you to select from a list of codecs it has found in your system. If we go to our help option in the top right hand corner and go to search, If we type in video code it. There is a list of standard Windows default standard codecs for AVIs and there's a wide range of different types of codecs the output size so you can have a scroll for that yourself in our synchro help and decide which one's the best one for you the codec that I tend to use is Microsoft Visual One at a compression rate of 100% this is a generic codec and probably the most generic one to use as it is the most compatible with Windows. So once you've got your animation set up, if you go to your animations in your navigator tab, right click and then export AVI, your codec can be found under resolution, compression, and mine, as you can see, mine is set to Microsoft Video One. If you press change, 
then you've got all your different options which are currently on your system and Microsoft Visual One should always be there and I've got compression quality set to 100 now resolution 1280 by 720 at a frame rate of 15 is a standard resolution output from Synchro if you want a high resolution I would suggest 1920 by 1080 at a frame rate of 30 now this will produce a high quality AVI if we go to the content tab if you want a high quality output make sure your driver is set to DirectX or DirectX 11 which is the best driver for better graphics anti alias make sure that's set to times 4 the higher the anti alias produces better results but bear in mind it does take longer to export and then make sure you've got enable software ticked rendering options I recommend having shadows ambient occlusion and bloom ticked I will go over each one of these in the next section of this webinar to finish off this webinar we will go over the effects you can add to your 3D window if you go to your top ribbon go to 3D then if you go to effects you've got ambient occlusion bloom fast silhouette edges shadows and use project global light if we turn on ambient occlusion when selected shading is applied when nearby objects or occluders will prevent some portion of ambient light from reaching a surface as you can see there and there if we turn on bloom when selected the renderer causes bright objects to bleed into darker ones simulating the imperfect focus inevitable with the human eye or any other type of lens if we turn on fast silhouette edges a kind of a 3D Google SketchUp effect is applied this effect enables the drawing of fast silhouettes where the difference between the Z buffer values of neighboring pixels is greater than a certain threshold this kind of gives a cartoon effect if we now turn on shadows and if you've got use product global light on to determine where the sun is coming from if you press control and left click on your cube manipulator it will determine where the sun is coming from that is the end of the webinar I hope it has been useful thanks for listening if you have any questions I will be available for a few minutes after this webinar thank you thank you Mitchell uh, is there any questions I checked in the group chat uh, there's nothing in the chat and no questions okay thank you for attending our 15 minute Friday and that is it